This issue has always been important, first of all. Like, it has never not been an issue. We need to pay attention to it all the time, but this time we're finally getting the spotlight on this issue, and it is so, like, it touches everything. So it's something that we need to pinpoint and look at from an intersectional perspective and try to work on all the time. I talk a lot about community healing, and today has been, so far, and, and it's continued to be, a model for what that can look like in real time. People shy away from the word healing, and I said this earlier, people shy away from the word healing in community spaces because we are trained to think of healing as something that's intangible. And in, in some ways, I always say, I can't define what healing looks like for survivors on an individual level. But as a community, we can come together and, and define what healing looks like for what we need in our communities. So when I'm talking about radical community healing, I'm talking about the ways that we have to create policies and we have to create spaces that protect our citizens and for those who have already become survivors, make them feel safe. That is what healing our community looks like. It's been my passion to save people. That's, that's my purpose with this. With what happened to me, I feel like everything happens for a reason, you know, and it's, I feel like this, this is my purpose, to tell people that it is okay, that you are not alone, and that you are safe, you know, and I'm, I'm just so happy. You can say, I'm so sorry that happened to you. How can I be helpful? What do you need in this moment? Is there any way that I can help you? And if they say no, let that sit, right? Don't harass folks. <laughs> just, I know y'all mean well, but don't harass folks. You sure I can help you? Are you sure you sure? Are you sure you're okay? <laughs> Are you sure? I'm in the car now. Are you still okay? No, don't. <laughs> like, this just, you know people do that. They just, and, and again, that's about them. That's not about you. It's about their need to feel better about what you're experiencing. When we actually have way more experience dealing with our own trauma. There's a lot of conversation about who's not being centered in the media. And it's true. And we should be fighting for representation. We should be talking about representation in the media. But... At the same time we're doing that, we need to be talking about what's happening in our communities and doing the work in our communities. The media has never traditionally covered this. The people who they're not covering, they've never covered, right? You know, and people wonder why they're covering Hollywood, because that's Hollywood. That's, that's what it's, it's driven. We are a pop culture driven country. So those are the things, it's because of us, because we want to hear the stories of famous, beautiful people in Hollywood. But the reality is the work that has to happen on the ground, we have to tell the stories. And so in terms of the LGBT community, it's up to those in the black community, Latino community, disabled folks, native folks, all the people who have been left out of these conversations have to garner their own. Like, we, can, we are in, a, in a, a day and age where we can create media. We have to tell our stories. It's not just a, it's not just a hashtag anymore. It's someone behind that hashtag as well. And for everyone who feels like they have a Me Too story but are like too afraid to say anything or just want to say they have a Me Too story, you know, like Tarana said, you don't have to tell details. You could just say, I'm part of the movement, Me Too. Uh, like I did today on stage. But she is an amazing woman. She is so kind and... Uh, uh, I was just so lucky to meet her today. We are at a watershed moment right here. I think we are going to look back at this point in history and know that this was the turning point for women's equality and safety. And so for young people, it's really important that they feel part of this movement so that it can be carried forward for years to come. That's why it was really important to involve iTry and the young women here. Um, they have such voice and such enthusiasm, and they really are the change leaders. So we have leaders right now, but they are our future leaders, and it's very important that they understand that this movement is about them.